This is Ed Hughes. Go ahead, Ed. Thank you, Mr. Cameron. Uh, my wife, Patty, and I uh, own and operate a ranch, a small cattle ranch in Quay County, New Mexico. My family's been there over 110 years. We just have lived through the attempted borehole siding uh, of high-level nuclear waste about two and a half miles south of our south fence. Now, looking at this current proposal, one of the major transportation routes is the Union Pacific, which runs right next to our south fence. So the problem has even gotten closer. If, there's a, a, if there is an accident somewhere, uh, no, nobody knows where, it could, it could be there. Coming down here on Highway 70 uh, between uh, uh, north of Elida, uh, we, I passed about five rail cars that, that turned over on the, on the, had been an accident. You know, those happen. I think the question, what we have learned in going through this borehole uh, thing that uh, we've been living through is that these consequences are essentially eternal and they are extremely nonpartisan, uh, has been stated. Uh, we just we just re, uh, finished our spring branding uh, this weekend, and we're hit, and we had, came down to this meeting. We are very concerned with passing on what we have to future generations. We have nine grandchildren right now who are very interested in the place, and we hope to pass that on. Well, here's our experience that I want to share with you with the borehole. Um, our, our, our experience is that the high-level nuclear waste industry pushes the myth, and I want to repeat that, the myth, of economic development when actually it is the end of our sustainable base economy and economic it is an e economic replacement or disaster mm -hmm. what happened with the borehole is that several ranches were uh, negotiating some loans from their bank for their current operating system season they didn't want to let their banker know what was happening because they were afraid they're going to put up more collateral another rancher who wanted to get his ranch evaluated was told that he couldn't do it now because it, we, we didn't know, he didn't know the effects of, a, of the borehole site that was awfully close to his ranch, what that economic effect would be, but it would be negative. So I think this, this, this a lot of things have already been uh, said tonight in a, in a sense that I am concerned with, but one of the things that came out in the borehole uh, controversy in Quake County was what was the kill zone? If there was an accident at this disposal site, what's the kill zone? It was a 50 mile radius. I want to know what the kill, what the kill zone is for this site. With that southwest wind blowing or whatever, what is it? This is a much higher level contamination than what we've had, what we were talking about at the borehole. What is the kill zone? Um, also, you know, the ranchers and businessmen uh, that we were, when we were going through this uh, uh, borehole con uh, controversy in Quake County, they, they made the statement that death had come to our region with the proposed disposal of high-level nuclear waste. That, that, and I, want, to, I want, to, want you to think about that. Death came to our region. We, we managed to, to fend it off in this occasion. But, you know, if we're already approved, and this is already approved as a safe storage concept, which I kind of took from your uh, uh, con uh, comments that you made, why are we here? You know, I think there's a real issue of what we're talking about here. Where is the justice? in taking out whole regions that never benefited from building the economy and destroying the economy with waste, high-level waste, that benefited other economies. Where is the justice in that? We are putting at risk, that has already been mentioned, the infrastructure, huge infrastructure, incalculable cost, uh, if anything happens. Given that rail accident north of Elida, there will be spills. The question is how many and where. Um, and I think that it, there's a, there are a lot of things to uh, evaluate in this. And looking at this, this just came out in December. I haven't had a chance to look at a lot of it. But there's a lot of questions in here that have not been answered at this kind of disposal site. You know, what, what, is, is, what are the questions? How do, you, how do you retrieve if there are accidents? How do you monitor? How do you repair? Those questions have not been answered. So I guess in, in summing up, I want to say that the whole tech and Eddie, and Eddie Lee Energy Alliance, and, and I agree with the earlier, earlier statement that, you know, you aren't bad people in the sense that you're trying to do us harm, but you're making a huge mistake. And I think Mr. Heaton and the rest of you involved in that, you are in fact proposing to bring death to New Mexico. Yes. 
Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. And now we're going to go to Patty. Patty Hughes. And then Joy Russell. Dan Holland. Timothy Jennings. Karen Howard Winters. And Thomas Jennings. Okay. Patty. Uh, I want to, I guess, uh, reinforce the comments that Ed made about, about economic development, whether this is economic development or not. Uh, I have an article here from San Onofre who has nuclear waste that wants to uh, see it leave their area and um, some people may be happy for it to come here. This article says in the search for finding a place to move the 3.55 million pounds of nuclear waste from the San Onofre nuclear generating station. Uh, one question always comes up, sure, it would be great to send all that spent fuel as far away from the beach as possible, but who would ever be willing to accept it? On Thursday night, those attending the quarterly meeting of this uh, community engagement panel heard from representatives of a private en uh, entity wanting to do just that. Uh, that person says one person's waste is another person's most valuable possession. And the uh, Eddie Lee Energy Alliance wants to build a massive nuclear storage facility in the desert of southeast New Mexico. Goes on, he goes on to say, we think it's an important project for us in terms of jobs and capital investment in our part of the state. Um, unless the NRC can assure us that in transporting 10,000 canisters of high-level nuclear waste, across the country handling aging canisters in, in doing that, that we will never have an accident. I, I want to say that while uh, the, the uh, Energy Alliance is looking for uh, jobs and capital investment in our part of the state, that one accident could take out jobs and capital investment of whatever economy is there. All of the infrastructure that has been uh, built for the oil and gas industry, for the ag industry, and for every other enterprise going in southeastern New Mexico, one spill can eliminate all that. I was asked when I came in here to show my the contents of my purse <laughs> to uh, one of our security people. Um, in case, this is what she said, in case I had something in it that could do harm to someone else. And I thought that's an interesting uh, question to be asked. Of course. When, of course. when we're going to be discussing Come one here. of the most dangerous, pot potentially, a potential things on the planet. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. From Holtec International. Joy? Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, as Chip said, my name is Joy Russell. I'm the Vice President of Business Development and Communications for Holtec. Been there for over 21 years. Um, it's my pleasure to be here tonight to meet you. I had the opportunity to meet several of you earlier at the Open House. I appreciate the open dialogue. We'll be here after to continue the dialogue, should you choose to do so be happy to provide to you uh, facts about our high store facility, facts about storage of spent nuclear fuel, transportation of spent nuclear fuel, um, and, and I overall I ask, I come here asking for your support. Um, I appreciate the sign. Could you put it down because I like to see? Thank you. Thank you. Because I, I know what it says. <laughs> I, I like to see what everyone looks like. Thank you. Um, our partner, the Eddie Lee Alliance, um, who members of that alliance are here tonight, was formed in 2006 to help you diversify the area, the economics of the area, and to help encourage economic growth in the area, and we're happy to be a part of that. Um, Holtec International, my company, is a strong technology company. We, our core business has been and is the storage, the safe storage of spent nuclear fuel and has been for the past 32 years. 
60% of the nuclear plants in the United States safely use our dry storage equipment every day with no issues, no incidents. We're very happy, we're very proud of that. Um, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has licensed all of those systems and they regulate that, the systems. They regulate the industry very rigorously. All of the equipment that we supply at, from Holtec is made here in the United States. We're an American company. We have three manufacturing facilities here in the United States, and we are the largest exporter of nuclear products. We have factories in Ohio, Pittsburgh, and in Camden, New Jersey. We're an American company, and we're very proud of that. We have an impeccable safety record. None of our equipment has ever experienced a safety issue, leaked as you so call it, but I would like to point out spent nuclear fuel is not a liquid, it can't leak. <laughs> Woo! What about the heat? Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's, let's allow Joy to finish her remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the members of ALEA had asked Holtec to be their partner in 2013 after performing a very rigorous evaluation about the safety and security of our dry storage system. We, our storage system stores the canister completely below grade. Unlike what we've heard here this evening, it does not sit 12 inches above the ground. I ask that you guys come and talk to us, come and get the facts. You need to listen to both sides of the story before you make your decision. That's, that's your prerogative, I understand that. Okay, we have asked the NRC to review our license application. The NRC will perform a rigorous evaluation and review, taking into consideration all of your comments this evening. And we look forward to that review and re responding to any information that is requested of us. The, the people here in the state of New Mexico are very well versed in technology. You have a very technically savvy state, especially in the nuclear technology industry, with two national laboratories, both with offices in Carlsbad. You have three Air Force bases, one Army base, and in, in this particular area of New Mexico, you also have WIP and Urenco. Uh, the geology, the site characteristics, environment, and other factors in this region are actually ideal and very well suited for the storage of spent nuclear fuel. Cave country. Our goal, our goal is to offer a temporary, right. safe, and secure used fuel storage facility to store the nation's used nuclear fuel. We vow, we commit to be good stewards of the environment and also good neighbors. And if you could just sum up for Absolutely. us, Julie. Thank you. Um, and and I, I look forward to speaking with any of you that wish to speak with us. Again, my colleagues and our uh, partners from Leah will be in the, uh, the, the adjacent room after. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Dan. Excuse me. Dan Holland. And Karen. Go, come on, Karen. Okay. Go. I wore this for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> right, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're using your time, but you can, you can do it. I left my notebook up there. I apologize. I'm sorry. Okay. I left my notebook up there. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. That was That's my okay. Fault. You don't okay. have to be sorry. That didn't you're fine. Yeah. Okay. Reset the clock. Yeah, I was going to say reset the clock. <laughs> okay, thank you so very much. I want to thank uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission for this opportunity to speak to you this evening. Uh, and uh, uh, and thank you, uh, Ms. Russell, and uh, all of the people from Coltec. I know y'all folks are not bad people. I know you're not. Uh, and you don't, you don't mean to do any harm, personally. And when I understand that, and all the other folks here understand that y'all are not bad people. But one accident could just blow the whole game. And even though it 
may not be your fault or it could be a slip or something you know could happen you know who knows you know accidents happen and it could just ruin the whole ball game and uh, uh, we didn't make this we didn't make this this stuff this stuff is made on the East Coast it's made on the West Coast we didn't make it we didn't benefit from it I don't believe that it should come here I live in Odessa I live 202 miles away from here uh, although I live very close to Andrews uh, you know and that's another thing that we're talking about uh, I just don't think that it's a good idea to move this uh, to have an in interim site I think we need to have a permanent site if y'all are going to move it at all okay uh, the karst topography huge just like the uh, gentleman was saying this place is sinking that y'all really need to take a look at, at what's going on with the earth. Uh, that alone, without any even accidents of human causes, nature has got a really big thing to do with this that none of us have control over. None of us. Only <laughs> that guy up there, or her. <laughs> Whoever, you know, uh, it's got a big thing to do with this. And that uh, uh, also we got a, a bad people who might want to drop a bomb, human, domestic, I mean, uh, uh, enemies, domestic, foreign. And the oil, the oil, we are the largest, the Permian Basin has got the largest oil field in the country. If anything happens to that, like that guy was saying, we're shot, okay? Uh, the rail cars, we have got antiquated rails. And the infrastructure, the bridges, our bridges are D minuses. How are we gonna get that heavy stuff across there? I mean, you know, these, and we're not thinking about this stuff. Notification, all the cities that are, that are, these rail cars are going through. These people really need to be notified. They need to, they need to have, have, uh, uh, a say in this. We need to people in New Orleans and Mobile, Alabama, and Charlottesville, North Carolina. They all need to have a a, a hearing like we are having. They are they're important too. I mean, our lives out here have just as much meaning as those lives do on the East Coast. And if they want to get rid of it. You know, why is my life less important than theirs? Uh, you know, um, you got to follow the money. I mean, no offense to y'all folks at, at the hotel. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. But y'all people can come in here and build this thing, make money, 40 years later, you're gone. And Sydney, could you sum up for us? Yes, too, sir. Thank you. And the stuff could still be here. You know, the permanent site may not be built. We don't know. We don't know into the future. And, you know, the people who also live here and have got the, the jobs there, we have to stay here. Our lives are here. So uh, there are so many things that, that we haven't thought of yet. It's just not, it's just not thought out yet. We need to we need to think some more about this before we do it, please. And again, I thank you for the thank opportunity. Thank you, thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Thank you. Amen. I usually don't do this. Oh, good. I wanted to make sure that my NRC colleagues did not miss anything that you had to say, so I was going to call a bathroom break. But, but I think that that's being taken care of so um, how about is I guess Dan Holland is not here anymore how about uh, Timothy Jennings Timothy and then Thomas Jennings and Sean McDaniels Rhonda Suderman King okay 
Go ahead, Timothy. I'm Timothy Jennings. I've, I've been an elected official in this area for 38 years. Uh, representing, I'm probably one of the, the only elected official was here when we started, when they had the hearings on WIP. Uh, my brother is also here. We both attended the hearings on WIP. And I, I would just tell you, for something that started out as being nothing more than transuranic waste, nothing but gloves, gloves and equipment, we, we seem to have gone a little further extreme than what they were told us then. Now, I would just tell you, in any public hearing, I hope our congressional delegation will be informed of the matter in which this public hearing has been held. Number one, anybody who comes to a public hearing should be able to be free to express for or against any idea without any fear of anyone clapping, any retribution, anybody saying anything. They should have that. And that has not happened here. If you want to have a public hearing in Albuquerque, have it. But don't come to Roswell and tell the people that in Roswell that they have to wait for three hours or four hours more than they were supposed to to come to a public hearing. When it's four to seven, it should have been four to seven. And you know, I'm just saying, you all be, the NRC needs to be honest with us. And they certainly weren't honest when they said WIP was nothing more than transuranic waste. Yep. Mm -hmm. It has not that look at it today. It's not there, but that's exactly what they said. And we have film, as I think Dean White filmed it, that. So just look at that. Now, I'm going to tell you that I think when you look at this stuff, look at what, what you're doing and come back and have a public hearing that is meaningful and not one that comes in here and it's so mismatched. Our university here has a place with 400 seats in it. Everybody can be there and sit in there. Everybody can see everything that you put on display up there. No one else in the back of the room, only the first three rows could see that stuff. <laughs> you know what? Do a decent public hearing. If you're a government employee, you should look after all of us and not just the ones you, that you want to look after. Now, now I'm going to tell you, uh, I, I haven't complained much about WIP or anything else in all, the, all my times with Mr. Heaton. I haven't said a whole lot about WIP being so bad or anything else. WIP's here because we were had very little political clout when it happened. That's why we got it. And so we're making the best of it. But, you know, this thing here is it's 50 miles from our ranch, and like other people from Midland and Texas and everything, you know, I don't have a 160,000 acre ranch. I have one I share with my five other brothers and sisters. But you know what? It's just as important to me. And I think we really need to look at that before we go through and you do this stuff. Let's have real decent public hearings. Have some in Hobbs, have some here, have some in Albuquerque, you know, have some in Midland. But let's have some real decent public hearings and do a good job of what we're doing and be honest with the people. And just remember that because I tell you, transuranic waste is not what's in that place in WIC now. Yep. And that's exactly what the people were told. No, don't clap. Please don't do that. That's not fair in a public meeting. <laughs> and, but you know, I spent 38 years doing this stuff about listening to people. And you need to listen as well as we learned in the legislature in New Mexico. And, uh, you know, I really, uh, I think this is something that we need to really look at and study very deeply and have more than just six or seven little posters on the wall in there and tell people that's what this is about. Yeah. And so I really hope you will open this up and do it right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Timothy. And Don't now we're going to hear from Thomas. You say amen. You say amen. Thomas Jennings. Uh, before my time starts, I'd like a point of order for this meeting. This meeting should be conducted under Robert's Rules of Order. And there should be no clapping, cheering, standing up, and all that stuff in the snide comments in the back. So I, I, that's with due respect for the way governments are run. And uh, first of all, thank you for coming and listening to us. I too was at the, with the whip hearings. I went through almost all those hearings. We were promised there would never be high-level waste here. And I can tell you, George President Bush, Senator DeMinci, Senator Bingaman, Representative Joe Skeen, DO Secretary John O'Leary, officials from Carlsbad, Hobbs, Eddie and Lee counties, all promised that there would never be high-level waste here. We've been lied to. We've been deceived. We've been misled. We need to stop that. You need to stop that. We don't want that anymore. We're done with that. You know, our roads are bad. You know, they fixed our road. Roswell has a two-lane bypass. It's the only only whip route road 
in the country with two lane, and it has at rod crossings, at grade crossings, which are dangerous as hell. I've had friends almost killed with those crossings. That's not safe. We need to make it safe. This whole tech deal, how much money comes out of there for, for roads, for infrastructure, for training, for our emergency preparedness? Not a damn dime. Nothing. We got that with WHIP. We don't get anything with Holtec. And, uh, you know, I'm in the oil business. And I've, I'm drilling more wells this year than I ever have in my whole life. And the Permian Basin is the hottest oil play in the world. There's major oil companies spending literally multi billions of dollars in this field. And to put this, uh, uh, whatever it is, in the ointment, the uh, fly. Flying the moment, I was going to say turd, but I was <laughs> be flying the moment, is wrong. You know, what happens if there's an accident? What happens to our, our budget of our state? Most of the money comes from the oil extractive industries, including oil. What happens to the state permanent fund? If, if there's an action or there's an incident or accident, that, that funding will go away. We're going to have to stop and shut down the oil business. And, uh, you know, all my, my life savings is in the oil field. And I'll probably be broke. And I don't think that's fair to me. I don't think that we should have this stuff slammed down our throat. You know, it might be good for Carlsbad and, and Hobbs 15 years ago. But today with the oil business, the way the technology is, it's all technology driven. Horizontal wells, three miles long, think out long, that is underground lateral. And... Uh, costing millions, multi-millions of dollars. Technology, this is all technology driven. We don't have the technology to develop to store this stuff in Southeast New Mexico. And Thomas, can I get you to sum up for okay. us, please? Uh, and you know, there's a lot of other businesses that are related. We have a lot of agriculture. If you look at the Pecos, Pecos River Valley, all the dairies, all that stuff comes in on railroads and all that sand comes in on for fracking. All the feed for dairies, you know, it would be devastating to our, our uh, industry in this area. I know we need jobs, but we don't need bad jobs. This is like 55 jobs. Thanks for listening, and I would ask you to refrain from clapping and cheering and all that stuff. Ain't going that nowhere. Baby, that ain't going nowhere. Woo!